It has been an insanely busy last month. Just so many tech announcements and cool products. It's driving me nuts. I mean, I love it, but it's also very exhausting and I just want to take like a month off and do nothing but play video games and hang out with the family. Oh, and did I mention I switched to Sony? So I'm getting used to all the Sony stuff and trying to figure out the settings and dialing in. And that's what we're going to talk about today, how to get the best out of your Sony camera. But first, I feel really bad. These packages have been in the office for like two weeks and I've just been neglecting them because there's so much to do. So it's a belt. <laughs> it's a wallet with my logo on there. Thanks guys, this is awesome. It's another wallet from Narrow Wallets. <laughs> this one I have been waiting for. Beta FPV. <laughs> this is like a tiny, tiny FPV drone. I don't know if you guys have seen Potato Jet flying these things, but these are incredible. Thanks guys for sending this. This is awesome. Oh, I can't wait to fly this thing. Thanks Beta FPV. I really appreciate it. Wish I had more time right now. Wish I had more time. Red Bull Winter Edition Frosted Berry. I have to use, I have to use this ax to break through. You guys ready for it? This is like straight out of Frozen, the intro. Me and Kai have watched that so many times. Like a Viking. Red Bull has the coolest packages that they said. Frosted Berry. I can't drink this right now though. I gotta, I gotta put this in the fridge and make it nice and icy cold. Can't wait. Someone sent me Tesla windshield wipers. Tesla aftermarket. Thank you. <laughs> this is awesome. YouTube is the weirdest job sometimes. So if you didn't hear, I'm on Sony now and I've just been loving it. Such a fun camera to use. The image is incredible and it actually works. Like you can edit the footage and everything. It's just a really great camera. But there's a lot of options in terms of settings, which is really good, but also bad. It's really great to have the control, but uh, it's also, it's a lot. <laughs> but I thought I would share what settings I've kind of landed on and, and what I think makes for a really great image out of the Sony a7S III. Before I forget, this video is sponsored by Adobe Stock and Epidemic Sound as part of their Storytelling Smooth campaign where I talked about some of the behind the scenes of my shoot last year in Iceland and how I use music to tell story in my videos. And if you didn't know, you can actually get Epidemic Sound music straight inside of Adobe Premiere now. Epidemic's music is now inside of Adobe Stock and you can access that through the Essential Sound Panel, which makes it really easy to have the music straight inside of your editing program. Such a great idea, well done Adobe Stock and Epidemic Sound. And if you wanna go watch the video, then I'll link it down below. I appreciate it and I think you'll like it. It's a pretty good one, it's a fun one. Okay, so let's start off with the basics. I am finally, for the first time in my YouTube career, filming in 4K for all of my videos. I'm not just filming in 1080 and exporting in 4K. The 4K looks beautiful on this camera and you can actually edit it. It doesn't like just crash your computer every two seconds like some other cameras. I won't name those cameras. Of course, the shutter speed is always double whatever my frames per second is. So if I'm filming in 24 frames per second, which is still the correct frame rate, 30, your shutter speed is gonna be at 50. If you're filming in 120 frames per second, it's gonna be 250. If you're filming in 240 frames per second, which this camera can do, it's gonna be at 500. Most of the time I'm wide open, so on this lens it would be f2.8. I just like that shallow depth of field look pretty much at all times. And ISO almost always stays at 640, which is the base ISO, meaning that the camera is gonna perform best at that ISO in terms of dynamic range and the noise. And if that was confusing to you, go and watch one of the many videos on YouTube about the basics of camera settings. Now where it gets tricky is autofocus and colors. So with autofocus, I'm a little bit torn because I like how, how snappy Sony's autofocus is. It's just really fast and, and just locks on really well. 
But then at times when my focus point might be off a little bit or when I'm wearing a mask and sunglasses and it doesn't really know where my face is, it can do this like classic fast Sony hunting thing, which doesn't really look the best. But at the same time, like I said, I like how snappy it is and how fast it focuses. So right now I have the transition speed set at five and the responsiveness at five also. But I'm not completely sold on it. I don't know if I should turn down the responsiveness a little bit. I'd like to know what are you guys using? What do you find is best right now? Because I'm not 100% sure on this part yet. Then let's talk about S-Log2 versus S-Log3. And typically with Sony mirrorless cameras, I would always say use S-Log2. The S-Log3 is just too much. But now we have 10-bit and the A7S3 can actually handle S-Log3 footage really well. But there are some downsides to it also. For example, it's a lot harder to color correct. It's still, because it's so flat, there's a lot that you have to do to get it to a place where it has a little bit more contrast. Yes, you can use some LUTs and conversion LUTs for that, but a lot of times I, I feel like those just don't do that good of a job still. The histogram is kind of pointless because it doesn't show properly where it's completely overexposed or completely underexposed. It's actually like a little bit in, it's not at the wall of the histogram. So that can be really misleading at times. You can think like, oh, I'm, I'm great on exposure. And then meanwhile, there's this like massive under or overexposure in there. And the same thing with zebras. If you have your zebra set to 100 or 100 plus, it's not gonna show them ever because it doesn't get to that point. Um, you can counter this with just dropping down where the zebras start showing, but it's another little annoyance. But right now for my fast workflow YouTube videos, I'm kind of still leaning towards S-Log2. It's just a little bit faster and easier to work with right now. I'm kind of going back and forth. I do like how much dynamic range you get with S-Log3, but it's a little bit of a headache with the workflow. But either way, there's some tweaks that you should be making to those profiles that'll make uh, color grading and color correction a lot easier for you. And the first one is the detail. So by default, it's at minus seven, which means there's no sharpening added and you gotta add that in post. Now the problem with this, it's nice to have the control, but the problem with this is that it's really slow on your computer, it's really taxing, it's hard work for your computer to sharpen footage. So I would put it around minus two or even minus one with the detail. And that means you're not gonna have to add sharpening in post, which really shortens your export times and just you know, makes it look crispy. And secondly, you wanna actually add some saturation. You're always gonna have to add saturation in post, so you might as well just do it in camera already. You can always take away saturation if you need, but it's nice to just have that saturation there right away when you add the contrast. And for me, I've settled at around plus 15, mostly because if you go any higher than that, it just looks terrible on the LCD screen. It just looks so bad that it makes me feel bad. I'm just like, oh, this footage is looking terrible. Plus 15 is that happy middle ground for me where I'm still getting some saturation, but it doesn't look terrible on the LCD screen with the gamma assist going on. Oh, and I forgot to mention the color mode that I'm using is the S Gamut 3 Cine. To me, that one looks the most natural, but in the end, it's kind of personal preference. I just realized, I don't know if anybody is actually interested in my Sony settings, but anyways, that's where I've landed right now. I think I'm leaning towards my modified S-Log2 right now for most uses. And then maybe sometimes in like really bright sunlight or if I'm filming something a little bit more high end that I want the best out of it, then use the S-Log3. And now it's time for adulting because winter is coming. So great that just like a couple days ago it was literally snowing here and now it's almost t-shirt weather almost speaking of zebras they're going off i'm overexposed i'm overexposed there we go that's better it's time to get the winter tires on i am not looking forward to winter i thought i'd go for a little one wheel ride and get some food it's been so busy that i haven't even ate any lunch today Ah, oh, some days. Taxes, winter tires.
about you guys, but man, like, okay, this this whole year has been crazy hard for everybody, I'm sure. But these last couple months, I was riding on like hope that like things are gonna get figured out, things are gonna get better, we're gonna be fine. And then fall hits, and it's getting cold, and the the cases are going up, and it just seems like there's no end in sight. And I'm just I'm so tired. Uh, just like everybody else, I'm so tired of living this weird version of life. It feels almost like you're kind of in like a, a some sort of jail, not full on jail, but like some sort of jail where you're kind of at home and it's kind of like bad to go out. You can't go out too much and all that. And I, I want to travel, I want to go to different places. And I realized the other day that like, it's going to be really hard to travel for a while because when you come back to Canada, you're supposed to quarantine for 14 days. And that's just not gonna work. Like, what am I gonna go to a hotel away from my family and quarantine for 14 days? So, um, I think until COVID is done, probably the only travel I'll be able to do is in Canada. I wanna go out, I wanna see the world. I know it's not the biggest problem to have, but I feel bad for just us collectively, everybody. Apparently it's shorts weather in November. <laughs> what the heck? There's my baby. Not oh, my baby, it's just my car. It always looks really scary seeing your car like that. Thanks so much. Have a good one, guys. The winners are on. Adulting. <laughs> <laughs>